Now that we have most of the model built, it's a good time to talk about setting up some additional views. We set up that one view earlier for the diagram model and that worked out pretty well. Let's set up some more specific views of the actual building itself. I'm going to minimize this for the time being to where we can get a really good look at what our view is actually looking like. When setting up views, there's a couple of good things to keep in mind. One, for the most part, unless you're doing something specific, views like this want to be taken at eye level. I went ahead and used the little man tool to kind of position the camera at at five foot six, which is basically eye level. One thing that I like to do for these views is to change my field of view. The default field of view is 30 degrees. You can see down here. You can either do it totally manually like this, and you can see the field of view changing, or you can type it in. I actually like to do something around 55. I find that that one gives me kind of a dynamic look at things. It opens up the lens wide enough to where I can actually see a little bit more of what's going on, and it's just kind of a good starting place. Any more than 55, and you really start to distort the reality of what the geometry looks like. I think it becomes kind of problematic. This is looking pretty cool. I like this line here of having the roof kind of come out over your head and maybe letting the pool fall off into the foreground a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And the way you do that is you go to Window, Scenes, open up this scene, and I'm just going to do this just the once. Hit the plus sign, Update, Create Scene. So you can see the scene has then popped up here. I can get rid of that scene window and and just use the tabs up here. If I want to make a new one, I can add to it or I can update. I can do a couple of other things like that. But now is also a good time to talk about shadow and shading. Right now, I'm just using the default environment. But if we want to start adding some more dramatic lighting or shadow, I'm going to open the window tab back up and go to shadows. Here you see it popped right up. It was nested next to my layers. And I'm going to say use the sun for shading. All of a sudden, it's like somebody turned on the lights and you can see how that really helped. Here you can pick what time zone you want to be in. I'm not too worried about that right right now. The default is fine for us. And then you can use this little toggle to look at how the sun for shading could affect the different times of day. So that's looking, like I said, better already. I'm going to go ahead and update that because my scenes directly relate to all of the sun and shadow settings. And so if you want to capture those in a scene, even if you're looking at the same view, but you want to look at it for two different times of day, you could make two different scenes of the same view taken at different hours. Right now, I'm just using the sun for shading. I haven't started to do shadows yet. I'm gonna click this here, which actually turns shadows on. Now, when I adjust the time of day, you can see the shadow is responding. So that's doing exactly what we want it to do, except at the pool. The pool is below the line of the ground. In order to have that look correct, I'm gonna have to turn off this display on ground portion. Now, the shadows are looking good. You can even see the shadows coming through the house. I would imagine that's the early morning light from the east coming through the windows. You can see the shadow of the windows casting on the pool. It's pretty cool. Let's get that to a place that we like and then save it back to our view. That's nice. We're gonna do one more view over here somewhere. Thinking back to that iconic photo of the house looking over the cliff. Something like that. For this one, I'm going to change the shadows to be much more westerly. And I'm going to go ahead and add a scene for that. To toggle between scenes, really easy. Just click the tabs up at the top, and it'll take you from one scene to the next. We have those two scenes set up, and a lot of times what I'll do is set those scenes up and then start to develop the detail of the model based on filling in the detail for the views that I'm interested in really getting into rather than building a bunch of stuff on like say the back side of the building that we're never actually going to see. That helps save time you know if you're in a pinch right before a client presentation or something I think we all do it no matter what software we're used to using.